So I would like to welcome all of you. We are in a seminar that is part of our school in mathematical models and governance. The seminar will be given by Claudia Pio Ferreira from UNESPI, also known as CPF <laughs> for the Brazilians. And she will talk about, I will read the title, Challenges in Using a Volvacia Infected Mosquito to Control Dengue Transmission. So please, Claudia. Thank you very much. I would like to say that I'm also a professor for UNESPI, but I'm in the countryside in the campus of Ubutukatu. And I'm also from physics, my formation, okay, my background. So I have been work with mathematical applied to biology for, let's say, several years. And I choose to talk about this problem that it's like challenging in using Volbaca infected mosquitoes to control dengue infections. So you can stop me when you want, no problem. So some kind of motivation that I think like for Brazilian people, everyone know, but I noticed between this, among the students that are here that some doesn't know about Volbachia mosquito yet, so it will be nice to discuss it. So feel free to make comments and questions, but just to have some kind of motivation about this technique of releasing or suppress replace or suppress the wild population of Aedes aegypti by the releasing of Bobakia carrier mosquitoes. So to make motivation about this type of work, if we see this, this figure here is data from Brazil. So we can see like the number of dengue cases reported since uh, I cannot see 19, 96 and until 2015. So we can see in color when each serotype uh, enter in the country. And we can also notice that because of the interaction between the serotypes, the number of bank cases like hemorrhagic bank also increase. So if we see from this perspective of dengue transmission, control mosquitoes because we don't have a vaccine is important, okay? But we also have other disease that are which of the vector is the same, Aedes aegypti mosquito, that is Zika and chikungunya, no? And remember that when yellow fever comes to the city, also the, the urban vector is the mosquito Aedes aegypti. So we can have a lot of examples that motivate us to understand the dynamic of disease transmission coupled with the dynamic of mosquito and to think about how to control mosquitoes because we don't have vaccine for this disease. We have for yellow fever, but not for dengue, Zika, or chikungunya, okay? So this is like a panorama of Brazil, and this is data also from Recife, showing that this was during the outbreak of Zika there, or some years, uh, because we have Zika and also chikungunya here, but just to show that we have all these virus circulating in the same time in Brazil, different countries, different cities, different intensity, and we can also think about a syndemic as we have these different types of virus circulating at the same time. So this is the motivation um, behind it, and the idea is that, well, we have all the traditional control that we know, that it's spray insect seed, take off uh, from the environment, uh, the where the mosquito can lay their eggs and things like that. But all this control has been trying year by year and still, by, still failing. So the idea is like, okay, let's think about other technology, and this is one possibility to control the population of mosquito in the sense of make it less, because transmission depends on it, the ratio between mosquito population and human population. So the idea behind it is that Aedes aegypti mosquito doesn't care the Volbachia bacteria naturally, so it is inject the strain of the bacteria is injected artificially on the mosquito, and the ones that are releasing in the fields because we already have like a lot of experiments of releasing it in the fields, in several countries, coming from Drosophila and from Aedes albopicus that carry the bacteria in the wild population, okay? So this bacteria is artificially introduced in mosquito, and this, it has been seen that, okay, 
The fact that mosquito is carrying the bacteria, it diminishes the, the quantity of the dengue virus in the salivary glands of the mosquito. So for example, the white population, this is the quantity of virus that we can measure. It. But for example, if the mosquito is infected by this strain, they could not see um, virus infection on it. So the idea is that the infection with Wolbachia block the, the replication of the virus inside of the mosquito, okay? So um, there is two important parameters related to the infection. One is the maternal inheritance, which means that infected female pass the bacteria for their offsprings. So it's like um, vertical transmission of the infection. And the other one is the cytoplasmic incompatibility, which means that uh, wild female that mate, wild male have offsprings, but the wild female that met infected male, all the offspring, well, let's say that a proportion of the offspring is not viable, okay? So they will not, uh, um, they will not emerge as mosquitoes. But the infected female, she can mat both, non-infected male and infected male, and still produce viable offspring. So this is very important for the technique because uh, as we will see in the next slide, there is a fitness cost of carrying this bacteria. It's a new symbiont, so it's like we are dealing with something that probably will evolve with time. So it's, there is a cost of, for example, increase on the mosquito mortality because of the bacteria, or for example, egg viability. And all these fitness costs depend on the bacteria that mosquitoes care. So it's dependent on the strain of the bobacia, okay? And another point that is important is, for example, something that people are discussing now, is that also temperature can change these two parameters that are related to the infection. So it can become the, the technique like not working the field because of the change of temperature. That's why they're still working and looking for a new strain that can be like overcoming these problems, for example. But also, uh, as we know, the mosquito Aedes aegypti has this kind of characteristic that is very important for him in terms of survival, that he always produce some quantity of quiescent eggs. These quiescent eggs are eggs that are laid in, laid in the, ambient, the environment, but they don't eclode immediately. They have some signals like humidity and temperature that make them stop development. So it's a kind of evolution that helps the mosquito to survive for better conditions in the environment, okay? Yes, so please. How is the bacteria transmitted to the offspring? Well, in the sense of biology, you mean? So you infect the eggs? Yes, yes, because... Um, all the eggs are infected. Not all the eggs. There is some kind of probability that depends on the strain. So this is two kind of parameters that they really try to optimize in the sense of looking for new bacterial strain. But let's say, I don't know if Hernan can answer this biological question, but it's really like when the, in general, the bacteria, until now, it's spread between, uh, among the somatics, but also germinative cells of the mosquito. So when the, mos the, the fem will like lie their eggs, they pass through this channel and then they are infected. I suppose it's like that, Hernan, you know something about that? Not every cell, so the, the okay. egg, the, so there is a probability. Okay, thanks. Yes, it's okay. Uh, in, in white population means more or less 50-50. Okay, but you know, this bacteria in other insects, because it's like 
It's very common in insects, in fact, not only mosquitoes. So in general, what we can see by evolution, as Matt can comment after, is that, for example, they can produce this kind of sex deviation, but also that increase the number of females in the population, because for the bacteria, as it's transmitted vertically, it's interesting. It's a way to persist in the environment. So that's why we talk about evolution also of this symbiont in the sense of, okay, now it's, it's working, but what about the future, no? Because in the other insects, we can see some kind of evolution in this direction. Yes, yes, in United States, Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, also Malaysia, and what else? A lot of places. Great, because then you can, after one generation, I think you can pick up the, the eggs and see how many of them. They really do this. So it's like 50% or 70 Yes, they, they, there is all kind of, you know, let's say, first, second steps in the sense of they, they work in the lab, then they go to this kind of same fields, experiments, and then they make their release in the fields, and they are checking how much all these, these, let's say, parameters or results really agree with each other, because we know that, you know. So there are companies in Brazil doing this? In, or um, uh, Fiocruz is behind it. Fiocruz, yes. Okay. So Fiocruz is behind it, and for example, uh, as in general, you have to use the, let's say, local mosquitoes, no? Because all of this problem of, with fitness and the, to carry the bacteria, if you put a, another mosquito, I think, in, 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 in fact, Eric commented this with me, that the first experiments in Brazil, they really used mosquito that was not from Brazil because, you know, all this technology of infected eggs and have, like, a mach uh, let's say, a machine industry to produce it, and then it doesn't work because our mosquito is very resistant to insecticide and things like that. So it's really, and I know uh, Christian can comment, but they are constructing a factory in Paraguay, no? So, and also in Colombia, I know that they are. And has a factory as well. I don't think it's from Frio Cruz, the factory, but let's say that she, they are involved in the experiments and they are the ones that are analyzing the data. You know Brazil, right? You, you are the owner of the data, no? Thank you. So that's what I know. So we have already articles that comment how efficient was it to block, for example, dengue transmission in Rio de Janeiro. And, well, at least in the local population where they release it. So they, they have some results. And I don't know, around the world, uh, let's say cases that work and cases that doesn't work, no or no? So it still be like, they, the release is done, but still be like too much experiment and too early to say what, if it will work or for how, how long, okay? Does the technology, the technology of the transgenics know that with time you lose it, if you don't take care of it? And so, and again, because of the fitness associated with the infection, there is this kind of threshold for invasion, you know? And, and that two parameters that I comment related to the infection are really important because they, they help the population to really um, colonize and persist in the environment because as their fitness is less, these other two parameters that it's like the vertical transmission and the cytoplasmic incompatibility help the population to stabilize in the environment. So this is the idea behind it. It should be a, a lot, oops, should be a lot of work to be done or, you know, you can see in the literature they are doing that. So a lot of questions related to special, how to release it, how much release, because for example, if you release females infected, they will beat the population. The population will not be happy to be beating. So maybe release males and after a while, and in a small quantity of females. So this kind of questions that, let's say, uh, you can think about how to do the release in the best way, not to, to disturb the people that are in, living in the region, and also to, to get what you want, that is the persistence of the infection. And this is like different from, for example, 
insect mail, this kind of technique that release mail that I sterilize, that we use too much in agriculture problems, it persists in the environment because of this um, vertical transmission of the bacteria. No? Okay, so I, I will discuss two work that we have been looking at, and, but there is a lot of open questions and, and things that has to be done. But I, I want to, to think about the impact of temperature over the technique and also the impact of the bacteria on mosquito fitness focus on key essence egg. So this is what I want to show today. And to motivate also this kind of work that takes account the temperature of the environment, uh, we have to remember that not only mosquitoes, but all insects, they don't keep their own temperature. So this means that they are really like sensitive to the temperature of the environment. And this temperature change all the insect cycle can make it like fast or slow, but also the behavior of it, in, in, for example, to look for um, blood and stuff like that, but also the pathogen development and transmission. Okay, so uh, this is the point that we also wanted to discuss because they can see that a lot of strain really are impacted by temperature, for example. So that's what we want to discuss. And this is explained too much, for example, the geographic distribution of the insects and all this kind of discussion about global arm and this, the, the spread of insects around the world. And Again, this is some lab results coming from this article showing, for example, that this is related to the hatch of the egg. So as we remember, if the female is not infected with the bacteria and she met an infected male, so we, we expect that no eggs will hatch for it, but with the increase of the temperature, we can see hatch of the eggs. So it's not like 100%, so that's the idea. And this is also, for example, if we have an infected female, an infected male, so there is no problem in the sense of producing viable eggs, and what we can see is that, okay, the number of eggs releasing from this matching decrease also with the temperature, because, well, the increase of temperature, because the bacteria is still developed inside of the eggs. So that's why these eggs cannot survive if they stay too much in the environment. So this is the idea behind it. But also, the temperature affects the transmission of the bacteria. So, for example, for this strain, again, this is strain, for example, for fixing temperatures that all the, the offspring are infected, but if we increase temperature and make change on it, there is no infection of the eggs. So it's really sensitive to the temperature, some strains more than the other. So this is also a kind of decision when you release infected mosquito, which kind of strain you use to infect it. So this is the idea behind. And what we did in this case, if we really think about the mathematical model, but a delay differential model. So this is like um, inspired by this work and what we pro propose here is, okay, as the temperature change all the, the, the life cycle of mosquito, we will put like development will depend on the temperature, also mortality, also oviposition, all mosquito parameters. Of course, there is a lot of hypothesis behind it that the development time will be changed, but constant, it's like discrete delay. And also, we will suppose some kind of function that describe how this parameter is changed with the temperature. That can change this function depending on which kind of mosquitoes you are dealing with or where you are dealing with. And, but the idea of the model is the following. First, we, we are at like a jump some steps in the sense that I'm present here like um, the model when we have um, infect in population, total one, infect population, total one. Then uh, how they change in time, let's look the first equation, differential, differential equation. 
So we have all this first parameter, and the way that we read is like, okay, um, this is like some time before, okay, this uninfected female, this infected, there is the, the sexual ratio here, so I'm talking about, okay, females, a proportion of eggs are female, this is the sex ratio. She lay eggs sometime before, and of course, this le these eggs has to survive until now. This is here. Here, I will show you after. But you know, this female, this is the oviposition rate of this uninfected female. This is like competition that is, uh, well, uh, this is, <laughs> I'm sorry of your position rate, and this is competition. I will discuss later, okay? So non-infected mosquitoes, uh, this is the, uh, uh, how you say, <laughs> of your position rates. A and this is the term related to cytoplasmatic incompatibility. I will comment it here. But this one say that, okay, the number of offspring that will eclode, okay? So not all of them will eclode. So the way that you read is like matching with infected male that is here. This is the cytoplasmic incompatibility parameter. So this egg uh, will not be, it will not wretch dependent on it. And here, here. And this is the ones that it's like complementary, that hatch, okay? So this is the way that we read. But we also have some eggs, or let's say this population will increase because some infected female will, with some rate, lay eggs. And these eggs will be able to receive with some probability, let's say this is the parameter related to the vet vertical transmission, and so the infection can be transmitted to it. In fact, here I'm counting like not transmitted or transmitted but lost during immature phase, okay, because of temperature. So this is the way that we read this, this, that multiply everything. And uh, here is mortality, this is easy one, mortality rates of the non-infected population. And this is also very easy, is like the infected populations that lose the infection and become like non-infect, okay? So this is cytoplasmatic incompatibility term, and this is like transmission of infection or not losing it by temperature. And here is the infected population. So again, only infected female can have, can, um, how we say, um, contribute to this increase of this population. So this is of opposition rate, competition, and okay, transmit the infection and not lose it during immature phase. This is survival to the immature phase. And again, this is like lose infection because of the temperature, go here. So this is like adult population, okay? So all the immature is really like inside, uh, model implicitly by the fact that we are taking from, um, account the development of it and the survival of it in the model. And okay, this is like competition. Again, uh, I'm taking account adult population, but in fact, I'm f what uh, we are saying here is that the 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 oviposition rates will be affected by competition between adult mosquitoes. So this is the idea behind it, and this is somehow the carrying capacity of it, the environment to receive these eggs, okay? So uh, we are were inspired in these two articles to, to work to propose the model, and these equations tell us how the development rates will change with time, so this is a kind of, um, this ratio is like accelerating, this acceleration that will be like given by the change on the temperature, so it's here. And here it also make influence in these other true variables that they are surviving 
of immature phase, surviving, uh, not infected one, infected one, and this is survival of the infection. So all of them are affected by the change of the temperature with this velocity given by this one, okay? So this is the idea, and this is like to see how it changed the natural one, let's say, and, and this one that's because of um, this impact on the developing time, okay? So we use these two reference to write the model, based on that, and then we make some kind of analytic work on it. Okay, Nathan, thanks. What? Don't, don't the mosquitoes compete with each other for resources? Yes, this is here. Here? With here, the competition. So, so, so here, so here is really like you can make this kind of interpretation is they are multiplying oviposition rate. So it's a change on oviposition rate giving the mosquito competes, for example, for place to lay the egg and stuff like that. And so this is the way that we can make interpretation of it. But the competition term is here. Yes, the death rate is here. Let's, because this competition affects oviposition, not mortality. Okay, so this is the way that we thought about that. It was also inspired by an article coming from biology, but from the yellow fever mosquito, in fact, okay? Which one, Christian? This is like the survival of the immature phase. So the, how survive change because as development is changing, so we have to make like this, also follow the survive of, it's not constant, no? But you can model in, you see that the other model, I really put competition only for the Navae and Pupae. Are, are there any systems? No. Systems yes. Okay. Uh, I will show you. Okay, <laughs> okay I, will sh I think it's, it's the next one, uh, but I will show you. Well, I make a trend, but I, I will tell you, okay? So <laughs> I was not really serious to give you this answer, but I will show you. So this is only some analytic work. Of course, we, we again, we keep the temperature constants, so we have an autonomous model. Everything is, let's say, more or less easy. We look for the stead state, the stability analysis, and things like that. It's, you can find in this article. The, the nice part here is to make some kind of biological interpretation, for example, because these two threshold will appear when we talk about stability of the equilibrium for the autonomous model, of course. <laughs> So it's really like we can, it's, let's say the mean number of offspring produced by an infected mosquito and the mean number of offspring produced by an infected mosquito. So we can make some kind of biological interpretation of these parameters. And also here you, we can see that, for example, extinction of both population is always possible, always exists, this, this solution. And this is like the solution related to only only the white population survive. There is a threshold that for this solution to appear. And, and this is the coexistence equilibrium that also has some kind of thresholds to appear. And after that, we look for stability analysis, okay? But this is not really what I will show. And, and so, okay, this is related to your question, okay? But what I did, in fact, or what we did, we did it's a collaboration work with Luis and Sergio. Uh, when you look for the literature, it's very complicated because you can find some data, but they are not complete in the sense that you can fit some kind of function. Or for example, and you say, okay, so that's the trend. I will collect different kind of literature, but they are not uniform in the sense of you have to keep also humidity in account. And as I told you, the mosquitoes are different. Doesn't matter if they are I had shipped, but the, if they are here in Brazil or I don't know in Paraguay, they are different. Or let's say in Brazil, they are different. Okay. So as we were not able to really find a good set of data, 
The only one that I know was done in 2001 from people from Susang from Marilia, and it's still be like not completed for us to really fit a function. So we really went to the literature and collect what we have. Okay, so with this, we, we fit some kind of oviposition function and let's say development rate of the Im immature phase. And the good part is that, okay, insects have this kind of behavior all the time when they, you look for their oviposition rate or let's say development. So you can have a lot of literature, not only about IHA chips that help you to think about functions to, to use and why it really means biology in the sense of, okay, you increase temperature and what happens with development, for example, you know? Or if you decrease it. And this is like ovipos uh, mortality. I'm showing only some figures, okay? We have also for the immature phase, let's say, and in general, insects have this kind of behavior when you, you, you look the, how the mortality rate change with the temperature. Again, this is constant temperature. If you changing it during insect life or development, the fibre change a little, you know, doesn't mean that, and, and they are to, the, the environment, they, they have in fact variation of the temperature, but in the lab is very complicated and more complicated to find the results that take it in account. So we were really using what we could get. Um, well, this, this is another problem because when you go to the literature, what you find is the mean value. So they, they, they don't really put all the results that they have in a way that you can make estimation of the error bars. If you are really working, let's say, very connected with people in the lab, we do some kind of work with people from agronomy, then we have it. Then we can put the error bars. But this was really collected for the literature. And, and sometimes you really write to the biologists behind it, but again, they are very jealous about the data. It, it's very hard to get it. This one? Oh, this we have no idea, okay? So I, we were like, let's do like that. There is no data there, you can see. Which, which figure? I cannot understand. This, this is scale? Yeah. You, you mean it, it changed little? Well, remember, this is a biological system. You cannot change too much or you broke it. Yeah. Okay, this one, we, we don't have data, so we were like, let's imagine that it works like that, okay? So this is not a good one to, to try to convince you, okay? But for example, these, these, these points are data. So what the data is telling you is that when you increase the temperature, the development rate stop. And also if you decrease it. And the interesting part of it is that this maximum, you see, for development, is not the same for oviposition. And that is not the same minimum for mortality. So in fact, it's a combination of all these phenomena that tell you how good is the population to persist in the environment. And there is like um, some way to measure it and also mathematical models that do with it trying to make this kind of estimation. The, the thermal temperature minimum and maximum for the population to rescue from the environment.
to, to what? This one? Which, which is to one? Okay, okay, the connection, the connection is that all these functions, if we move back, if I understand your question, this will tell me, for example, how to, to, what to put here. Because these come from, okay, now I get it, your question. These come from here, for example, okay? So if, if I change temperature, remember, there is like two temperatures there, I will move back. But let's say that I move from here for, and to here. I have to tell how much the development change, okay? So I use this to, to put a number here, okay? And also if, if for example, you see the mortality of non infect population here, depend on the temperature that which depend on time, of course. So again, how I measure it, I move back, give, giving a time, giving a temperature, I will show you, I come here and, and pick up this number. So this means a huge approximation also, okay? Because it's like at each time, but I'm supposing, okay, at each time I can really make this kind of change. Go here, go here, go here, okay? So it, there is a lot of assumptions behind it. You get it? Yes. I will show you more. No, no, but all the anal analytic part, I suppose that the temperature is not changing. So when you suppose that, then all these four equations that you are talking about disappear, no? Know? Yes, because survival is constant, and development is constant, and then you have uh, only, oops, I'm sorry. And then you have these two equations that still be delay, equations to solve, okay? Because if you make it like, and also it helps me to define the initial condition, okay? Because I have to deal with initial condition that it's not one point, but has to have all this, let's say all delay time <laughs> behind. So you get it? Because this is, this is the same. So this is zero. So this is constant, and then it's like survive is constant, and okay. So for example, uh, if if you go here, you can see this because this we are not. I was not considering that the model is not autonomous. Yes, yes, it's an exponential function that in it's like something like that. No, you can solve it by hands. So surviving, for example, uh, comes something like that. Okay? So that's why you, you stay with two variables and it's like you can do some work with, with hands. Is one, let's say. Okay? Something more? Good. So, um, okay, so I'm showing this, it's like we will play with it, of course, and we'll think about scenarios where we release this infected mosquito and we'll try to, to make some kind of measure if it's effective or not, or some conclusion about how the temperature affect it. But here, what I want to say is that, okay, what they do in the field, so first, you, you have to decide, for example, if you want to suppress or replace population. So based on your objective, you define, for example, your strength. Well, that is a simple way to think, but it's more or less this kind of idea, no? That the parameters related to the infections that depend on the strain, uh, it's correlate with the, your objective, okay? 
And also what they are doing, as I comment, they are doing it in several countries. What they do is like mass rearing and periodic release falling by inoculative seasonal basis. And they check time by time the population to see if they need a new release or not. So that's what they do in the fields. And again, it's hard to find data about that. I can tell you. So what we did, like <laughs> modelers, okay? We were like trying to look to the problem. So again, a lot of assumptions. So let's say this is the mean temperature of Rio de Janeiro. I don't remember exactly, 10 years. And we were like looking at the mean just to make like, okay, convince you that I will use some kind of periodic functions to tell how the temperature change on time, okay? So this is inspired by the data. We can also plug it in the model, but it will, it will be like, uh, let's say, assumption in the sense that I'm taking the mean temperature of the day, but we know how it change. It's really like big change in one day, okay? But this is make to convince you guys that, okay, I will use some temperature that changed periodically with time, and I put in my model, all the parameters follow it, and the dynamic of the population follow it, okay? So this is the idea. And what we did is like, okay, if we have this kind of behavior, let's say that we have the population of mosquito in one year, we can identify time where the population is big, some time where the population is small. So what, what is the best uh, time to release mosquito? Stuff like that. Also like, okay, the release, how much? Four times, three times? It's really like playing with that, okay? So just to get an idea. And for example here, oops, I'm sorry. So for example, this is exactly the idea that I make my release when the mosquito population is high or when it's low, I make one release or the same amount of mosquito but four release um, with a period of seven days between each release. So I can do it like um, think about theoretical scenarios and see what happened. That's the idea. And then the way that we analyze that, it's like trying to define some kind of measure of the efficiency of the technique by really measuring um, the number of mosquitoes that we have um, up below the curve of the infected mosquito, the, below the, the curve of the mosquitoes, okay? So the mosquito population. So uh, during some time, so I make the release, I, I wait some time, and I count the amount of mosquito that I have during this time. And then I can compare the population if I don't, I, I don't do release of infected mosquito. And when I do release infected mosquito, I compare them. So this can give me some kind of measure about the efficiency of the technique. So this is the idea. So here, for example, in this figure, you can see for in blue, when the mosquito population is high, in red, when the mosquito population is low, and also continuous line, the reduction on the wild population, depending on the amount of mosquitoes that I released in the fields is this axis. And also here you can see the prevalence of the infection, the population, the mean prevalence during this, also this time that I was measuring, okay? So for example, what we can, uh, this is like one shot, one, one bat, one release, and this is like four release, the same amount of mosquito. So this is, uh, it's to, to tell, for example, that, okay, four release is more efficient than one release because uh, we very fast achieve reduction of the population and also high prevalence. So what else? Um, it looks like to release during the favorable period, it's better than the one that's not unfavorable for mosquito population. So it's better to release during this, this time. Also, if we still increase in the amount of mosquito, this, this means a lot of money putting on rear in releasing process. So after some amount, 
the, the prevalence or the reduction is the same, taking account, of course, that we are looking a period of time, okay? So it's, it's really like, okay, there is an amount of mosquito that it's enough to have an efficient and not to spend too much money, let's say. So this kind of interpretation that we were doing in these figures, and this one, it's really like, depending on the temperature, the mosquito population, uh, the dynamics change because depend on the temperature that we are looking. So in red, the white population, this is the release and the infected population in blue. So this is one temperature, this is I, I increase the temperature and so on. So what is the effect of the temperature on the technique? Wow, it's finished, okay. So I will just stop it and, okay. So this is like, the way that we read is like, I increase the temperature and we measure here the number, this ratio that it's like the number of mosquitoes that I release to, to achieve some kind of efficient in control. And this efficient, we, we, we set up like 50% of prevalence, okay? So we put like this kind of magic number to measure it. And then we can see that the temperature, if the, as the temperature increase, the, we have to <coughs> release more mosquitoes to achieve the same prevalence on the population. And well, to, to okay, now I, I get lost. <laughs> so this is like, yes, as temperature, okay. As temperature increase, we need to release more mosquitoes to achieve the same objective, okay? And also, with the increase of the temperature, the prevalence decrease. And when I change the symbols here, it means that I cannot achieve my objective anymore. So this is the way that we are reading it. So the, the model, with all the assumptions that we know behind it, what is telling us is that, well, it looks like it depends on the temperature we can have, like, we, we, it's really like the idea to have this kind of framework that we can play, and if we have this kind of function that really fits well, all these parameters related to the mosquito life cycle, we can say, okay, this is what we expect in the field, giving, again, temperature constant at each time step, stuff like that, okay? And, and this is like um, about the bacteria strain, just to show that uh, here is prevalence. So of course, if it, we have high, the parameter of um, vertical transmission is high, and also if cytoplasmatic incompatibility is high, prevalence is achieved more efficient. So that's why they look for bacterial strains that have just two parameters very high. But remember that again, each strain has uh, sensitivity to the temperature, so sometimes you have a good one like that, but it's very sensitive to the temperature, so we, don't, we cannot release in tropical areas, for example. So this was really the idea in the, the, of the, this first model that we construct, the way that we work on it, and this was the conclusion that we got, you know, from the, all these, these scenarios that we construct, and basically numerically, you know? So that, okay, if for release delayed it by seven days, each one is more efficient than one release of the same amount of mosquitoes during the favorable period, uh, it was better to implement the release, uh, increase these two parameters related to the infection, will optimize the efficacy of the technique, high temperature can really jeopardize the efficacy by both um, increasing the number of mosquitoes that we have to release in the field, but also to diminish the prevalence of the infection in the field, okay? And the idea of having this kind of framework that can help us to, to draw scenarios, to think about scenarios, and to test the technique before releasing. So that was the idea, and I think my time is finished, so I stop here, okay? Just. Thanks, Claudia. We have some time for questions. Um, I was wondering uh, the uh, ray of uh, 
distance that the mosquitoes can can move, can move. Yeah. and this is something it, that is yes. not and the, why this, it's not this is not in, in the work that i comment okay. to you this is something that we are also interested on i will just show you the last one okay <laughs> that we were like the idea of really put special information in the sense of where are the position containers where the mosquito lay the egg okay. and how difficult is for example for this mosquito that are released to get on it and also there is competition no okay so that's for example when you look for the literature they sometimes they really release they, they have this kind of question what is better to release the adult or the immature face yep. and in this case we bring let's say some kind of um, spot spots with that X that include in the environment yeah so this kind of special question there is a lot of uh, stuff that was not studied and, and this is something that we are also interested on you are okay. welcome okay <laughs> <laughs> and also if there's uh, I saw that there's a asymptotically um, velocity in this impact of the temperature so if um, on one of the graphics that you present and this one? And no, no, no. This one? No, no. It's uh, the, the one for mosquitoes? Yes, this is okay. uh, the rate of infection. So it's. But. Oh, uh, no, this is. We no, don't but, know. But, okay, we okay, were okay. like, okay, supposing that it's like that. Okay. So that's why I talk about the framework in okay. the sense that if we have data, we can really change these curves and really make okay, better okay. guess, let's say. Yeah, and, and in the sense. Uh, there are if if this region it's uh, if we can uh, measure or map the perimeter, can we um, take this uh, range of temperature a less less one a uh, little because we have a range here for like 42 degrees to seven degrees, and I, I wondering if in the field ah, okay. if we we can. Uh, map the pyramid so we have the micro climate yeah so we can uh, uh, put the range a little so this acetoptically will not be this so fast so the impact of the temperature will not have this this is absolutely true and, and it's very interesting because it looks like uh, let's say something that we can have it intuitive but if you ask for all the entomologists, they don't have any idea what is the relationship between the temperature because, you know, they, if you go, for example, for each Brazil, you, we know that it's like agriculture country, okay? So if you go to any farm that, I don't know, have sugar cane or soya beans, any one that you want, they have something that measure temperature on it. But they don't have anything that measure this, this micro clean. Mm -hmm. And we are also working with people from entomologists, but more in this kind of problem related to agriculture, but will give us information that we can more or less guess about how to connect, if we can, these two type of measure. The one that's really like outside, something that measure and talk about all the farm, and micro clean, like they, they, they really put the equipment in the plants and follow it to, to check how to connect it. We, we have some work on that with people from entomologists. Uh, yeah. And the other question is, what is the period of time of all the cycle from the mosquito cycle? Uh, depends on the temperature. So if the temperature is, is good, or let's say, I don't know, 25, let's say, I think it's like 20 something, okay? The best one, uh, it's like 10 days, all the cycle. Okay. If it's like cold, then it's like more time, 20. Okay, okay. Thank you. So it really depends on the temperature. The, the, the cycle? All the cycle. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Thank you very much for the presentation. It, it was a very interesting. I like it. Um, 
Uh, I was wondering in the stability analysis that you did uh, in the same, that you found the fixed points for the systems, but I, I didn't know, or maybe I didn't hear the, the type of stability of those fixed points. If, the, for example, the zero zero is an unstable fixed point or not. And the second question is, maybe because you got results that there are sustained oscillations, maybe one of those fixed points is unstable and you found a limit, a single li a limit cycle in the, in the system or not? Yes, there is. So I will show you, it's, it's not the same model, but then you get the idea, okay? okay. So for example, here we, have, we will have some, in the threshold that I show you will tell us. So imagine that threshold that talk about uh, mosquito fitness so we have here, for example, if both are less than one, um, the equilibrium point of where the both population go to an extinction is here and it's stable. Okay. Okay. And if you increase uh, the fitness of wild population and if it's bigger than the fitness of the infected population is this region, you have only wild population. Have this in mind, I will tell you more information. And here, for example, if we, you increase um, above one the fitness of infected population and it's bigger than the fitness of the wide population, then you have coexistence, okay? But for example, if the maternity transmission is really 100%, then you have only infected individuals. So, and in this region that you can see here, imagine a line here and this line that you can see here here and here, you can have oscillation. Oh, okay. Okay. And also, uh, last one. Last one. If, if you wanted to to extend the model uh, because you are reproducing good results, uh, if you wanted to introduce some special dependency, how? Uh, what kind of uh, idea you are uh, wondering or, or thinking in order to introduce those uh, diffusion, advection, or well, I know that Sergio and Luis is really talk about patch models, no? Patch models that are connected and then you, you can move between patch and this is the way that they are thinking about putting this kind of special structure. So it's one way that you can do. The other way that, the, let's say the one that I know to do is, is using a cellular automata that is the less, okay. the, the figure that I show her. So. Okay. For me, it's more comfortable to use cellular automata because then you can really put special information on it. And oh, okay. so this is another way. I think both will work. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It will be like different scales, no? Okay. But that's the idea. Okay, thank you very much. I love Clau Claudia, but I'm suspicious <laughs> because I like this. Okay, but the point is the following. Uh, the idea of fallback is to replace one population by another population. To say the white population by the population using Volvakia. That's basically the idea. Yeah, you, you don't really need to replace it, you know? It's just to keep the well, or to reduce in a high yeah. level. Because yeah. transmission of dengue depends on the ratio between two populations. And if the infected population is not able to transmit, it's okay. So uh, no, it's right, really right. But the point is, in some experiments, even in Brazil, they, they fail to, to introduce Volvakia. If you say the white population rejects the population with Volvakia. Oh, and, so, and so I, uh, some explanations in, in one moment was due to the insecticide to in, insecticide. But maybe the, there is another explanation that can be the temperature. Mm -hmm. So can we obtain some information with this model in order to see if the uh, population with Volvakia can be rejected by the white populations? What, what do you think? That is really the, the idea, no? If we could really, we still like, you know, the, the literature really change a lot, so you have to be looking all the time. But un until, we, we didn't saw, for example, I'm sorry, we were not able to find really experiments that could get us to get some kind of 
function, you know, that I could show some data and, okay, this is, maybe it's like that. So this is really the important part of the model because we plug everything on it. So, uh, for example, some, when she was telling me and I was thinking about like something that we really didn't do, we didn't do it, make, was the sensitivity analysis because it's really related to how you change the functions and the impact on re your results. You know, I, when she was asking me, I was like, I, we didn't make it. So this is an important point to, to do also. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking about in the sense that the model to orient experiments. Exactly. To say, to create an experiment in order to understand what happened with the temperature following the modeling, exactly. you know, something like so, that. Yes, yes, no, I think this was the idea. It's like, okay, let's think about the problem Let's propose some model. We still have a lot of gaps in the sense of biological information, but maybe it can motivate to, to look back and also to make experiment. I completely agree with you. And then it, it was really the way that we see the model, you know, in the sense of it, it, it will be like good and if we can make like people from biology really do the experiment and then we can just, we can really check it. Hi, um, just a small question. What is development rate? What is the what? Development rate instead of birth rate. Ah, the birth rate? No, the other one, development, development that rate. have the same temperature what? resistance. What? Uh, in the, what do you mean, the model? No, what what is development rate? Ah, okay. Development make, of the okay, okay. of the animal, the, no, the, the time it takes, the, the immaturity, cycle size. Immature phase. Egg, uh, the eggs, I think, uh, it is like Lafayette and Pupay. The develop well, okay. From one the stage to another, time. let's say, that one's varied uh, from eggs to larva, uh, and then the other one is for the time it here. Uh, when you see the model, we are really talk about adult population. Uh -huh. So development here really mean all the immature phase. All. Yes, we really didn't split it in other compartments. And it's the past. Um, the time that it takes for eggs ah, okay. to, the to emerge. Well, eggs from adult until adult. Okay. Okay. The cycle. Let's say it's. Smaller or larger or smaller? Yes, the exactly. Cycle. Ah, okay. To Thank you. The leg is lay and then the adult emerge from it. It's exactly this time. I'm sorry. I Any other question? So I have a question. Your model has only a one point time a delay instead of an interval. So do you know how sensitive the results or how robust the results are with respect to the length of this uh, delay? If you change the delay, will you obtain the same results? Will you obtain oscillations? Because when you have delay models, the model is very sensitive to the length of the delay. Yes. Have, we, you, have you explored this? Yes, we have oscillations when we change it. This is exactly what I comment to him. This, this is not related to this model, but we, we get something very similar that I didn't put here. Oscillation, uh, because you can, you can think because this, this parameter, it's, you have all this oviposition, development, everything here, okay? So you can imagine, for example, that you change the temperature, so all these parameters change, so this means that this one, that it's a combination of then will change. So you have oscillations and when you are here and when you are here. Like, imagine a line here, this line you can see. So oscillations can come from here and or from here. And, and for example, um, in, in this article, we did it. So if you go there, this one we did it. So it, it's very interesting because for example, we can, you can think about the way that you are moving the, the, the delay, for example, no? In the direction of coexistence to uh, wide population or in the direction of the coexistence to uh, extinction of population, 
And then, for example, you, you can have both population oscillation and only one because, you know, you cannot make oscillation round zero. So it's very interesting. So we, how do you choose the, the right delay length? In your ah, to, to put it here? Yes. Wow, uh, again, uh, to put here what we really did <laughs> was really follow these, these curves that I show you, that it's a frank stand of data coming from the literature, okay? Okay. That's the, the, the right way to describe it. So we re really use these functions that we fit, then we come back to the discussion if it's a good fit or bad fit, but we, we use these functions that we fit to this data that come I from guess. the literature to decide what is happening with the delay okay. and all the other parameters in the model. Okay, if last question. Okay. Yes. Um, so on slide 14, you show the model that we have for temperature. This model does not take into account the daily variation, right? And I the think you the daily uh, amplitude of temperature. Mm -hmm. And I think you commented on that, but is expected to to take into taking this in account into account is expected to give some qualitative difference in the in the model or, or it, not? What you can imagine in related to that, the way that I think is that here, when we plug like this in the model, everything is like instantaneous, you know? And this is not true for, for mosquito or any kind of biological life. The things are not instantaneous. It takes like time to, it's accumulation of energy to really change phase. So this is like the way that I think in the sense of, okay, uh, we are not taking account the, the the changing of the temperature during the day. But for me, the point, the really one is like, it's not instantaneous as the way that we are plugging in the model. No, it's really like accumulation of energy and then transition. Yeah, Anna, do you want to make comments on that? No, Anna is, is better for me than for biology. Can make comments. Uh, I, I was wondering if you are going to visit this in your plans to make a study of the structural stability of the model. So not not only how it depends on parameters, but how it depends on the structure of the model. In particular, with respect to the choice of using delay equations, because if you tell me you are representing mosquitoes with delay equations, I am going to answer, okay, you are looking to the mosquitoes in the laboratory. Because the, the, the dispersion of the developer, yeah. developer and developmental time it's not like this. Is, is, is not yeah. uh, very, it's, it's not a small unless you have a very high rate of food. When the rate of food falls down, the developmental time expands and the dispersion expands. Uh -huh, I understand. So th th there is a key point, and in, the na in nature, you do, you do not expect to have what you have in the lab. Uh -huh. No, I, I understand your point, and, and now I, I, it's a question for you. <laughs> what kind of model do you think is more interesting, like a uh, stochastic one or? Because this is this is something that uh, it's very interesting also to think about. No, I, I, what I, I agree do with is, you. I completely is, is, agree. Is try to get a larger class of models that include the delay models in yeah. some limits. Yes. And then study this yeah. class. Let's say that the way that I, I did in fact was really like I I went to the literature. I really explore everything that was there. And it was, I was convinced that it was interesting to use a delay model. But I, I, I agree with you that this is some kind of importance in the sense of how to model it. And, and just to show you, but I, I will not go through it, Marcel. <laughs> but for example, when we were thinking about the QSN X, I, I really put a different kind of model. I was like, okay, Let's work with ordinary differential equations. I changed the way that I put uh, the carrying capacity. You know, I was, this is exactly um, in the direction of your question. 
And I can tell you, I have the same G address. So it's really robust, you know? Of course, the, the, I, can I have to make an interpretation of these parameters. But th in the sense of how robust is qualitative, the, the diagram that we get, it's really robust. It, but I think it's like in the direction that you are asking. But this is a good point. I agree, I completely agree with you. Okay, thank you, Claudia. Thank you very much. Ah, é. Eu acho que sim. Eu acho que sim. É, é que assim, eu, eu sempre fico tentando.